Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cindra Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits, so get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Michelle Kerwood, and Michelle is with the Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Oh, you folks are doing such important work with our families and our youth, and so I'm really eager to hear what's happening these days, especially with programs and all. Yeah, so I am the Director of Youth Treatment Services at CADA, and I oversee our three Daniel Bryant Youth and Family Centers. And so we have uh, one in Santa Barbara, one in Santa Maria, and one in Lompoc. And all three are a hub of support for youth experiencing substance use disorders, early intervention services, uh, parent support, uh, mental health issues, and um, kind of a diversion program. Um, So we try to create a center where all they can get all their services in one place. Wow. So you have three, one in each one of those places. And, you know, how do people find out about that? So a lot of our referrals come from the schools. They come from our probation department. They come from um, pediatricians, from families, um, walking, just walking by and seeing it. Um, we have a parent support line that parents mm. can call to get some assistance. Um, and a lot of times parents will just say, I don't know what to do. I found, I found this in my child's room or um, I just found out my, my son is vaping. And, and to be able to call and, and we can help them out with that. That's great. That is just wonderful. So, um, so help me understand. So it's called the Daniel Bryant. Youth and Family Services Center. Youth is that and right? Family Center, yes. Youth and Family Center. And so um, let's talk about, you've got services for the young people. Mm-hmm. You have services for families. Yeah. And so maybe talk, talk a little bit more about what kind of services you have. Yeah, I mean, when, when youth are dealing with substance, uh, trying out substances with substance use disorders, it really doesn't, it isn't as effective unless we include the family. Mm-hmm. And so we have parent support groups ongoing regularly for both our um, parents who, whose uh, children are in our services and those who are from the community that might just need that support. And then we have a really exciting um, treatment modality called multidimensional family therapy. Mm. And so that um, therapy includes sessions individually with the youth, sessions individually with the parent, and then sessions all together as a family. And it's a very, very effective um, form of treatment for uh, kids who are experiencing substance use. That is great. So I just want to, you know, make sure I get this right. So so you ha- are they... Th- therapists that work with the families and then and also with the youth? Correct, yeah, and it's the same therapist working with each of the different um, okay. dimensions of the family. And so the therapist then, depending on the circumstances, would work with the youth by him or herself and sometimes with the whole family, or you just sort of yeah. play it by ear? It actually, we usually try to do, it's it's pretty intensive. It's two to three sessions a week for that family. Oh. Um, so a lot of times, or, or sometimes when kids are coming in, there there's maybe parents who are separated, divorced, and, and one of the things we really want to work with them is how to co-parent a teacher, a teenager, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And so we're meeting with um, maybe two parents that aren't, aren't together. So in some cases, there's uh, a session once a week with those two parents. Sometimes, sometimes it might be a session with dad by himself or mom by herself, and then we're bringing them together as a family as well. So you're kind of helping the um, teenager decide, you know, what are, this is what we're going to get ready for in family session, helping the parents decide this is what we're going to get ready for family session, and then bringing them together in that same week. Okay, so you said two to three sessions a week. Yeah. So how many weeks, do they commit to a certain program, a certain number of weeks? Uh, we Usually four to six months. So although it's intensive, it's a little shorter than some of our other interventions. Um, oh, four to six months. Yeah. Wow. And so they they come there regularly, receive the therapy, and I don't know, do you have a sense of percentage or number of uh, successes? With our, uh, you know, the MDFT is just one of the different uh, interventions that we offer within our center, but I would say that with the parents and the youth who are um, participating, it's, it's, it's a much higher success rate because to have the parents there and to have that 
child know that their parents care enough to be attending twice a week on their behalf is yeah. really, really powerful. And it gives us a chance to kind of change the entire family dynamic in a way that's going to be useful for them. So I would say I, I don't have the success rate, but I would say yeah. that it's, it's, it's even higher when we're able to include families. That is great. And let's just say whatever, for whatever reason, it's not possible to include the family of a particular young person. Can that young person come by themselves? Of course, yeah. So, I mean, the, the MDFT is um, probably less than 25% of the kids that we have in our center. And oh. the other ones are participating in our group and individual counseling and, mm -hmm. and therapy sessions. Um, and uh, some of them were, you know, were using other evidence-based practices to help those uh, kids overcome their substance use disorders or um, their co-occurring mental health problems. Okay, so sometimes there's groups. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do it with an individual yeah. young person. And so you probably have someone who makes a, I don't know, a plan for each yeah, person. Exactly. When it when someone comes in, everything is individualized. So okay. um, we have early intervention services for for people who are maybe just starting out, maybe have have tried drugs or alcohol a few times, but really need that support. And they're probably going to be a shorter term. So they might come in once a week, and they might only be there for you know a month or mm -hmm. so. And then if someone's coming in with higher level of use and more needs, then we're going to figure out, hey, maybe that person's coming in once once a week for an individual and twice a week for a group, and they're getting family support, and they might be here a bit longer. Um, so yeah, it's all individualized. Okay. Is there anything, um, you know, prevention-wise? Let, let's say a parent is worried, oh my gosh, my child is getting to that age when, you know, a lot of kids uh, experiment. So do you have any kind of prevention? Um, you know, the biggest thing is to, to continue talking to your children. Start the conversations when they're very young uh -huh. and talk to them throughout. And don't let the first time they hear about drugs or alcohol be from the media <laughs> or from their friends. You know, have those conversations right. with them early on. And then also know that they're watching, you know, our behavior too. And if, you know, if we're, if if there's um, substance use in, in your community or your family, um, to having that conversation with them about, you know, what responsible use is and, not, and what it isn't. That is just excellent advice. <laughs> yeah, I can see that that would be important. So, um, so once again, let's say somebody's listening to this and they think, oh gosh, I really want to get my child into this program. They could go on your website, they could call you, they could Absolutely. ask questions like, oh, like what, what should I expect? Absolutely. So, you know, our website is kadasb.org, C-A-D-A-S-B, as in Santa Barbara, dot org. And um, all your answers should be there, but it, there's there's our email addresses, our phone numbers, and, um, you know, just an email or a phone call to say, this is what I'm doing, Who? what do I do from here, and we can get you to the right person. Yeah. And so CADA is a nonprofit, a 501c3 and so while they're on the website, I bet you have a Donate Now button. A person could make a financial donation. Absolutely, yes. That would be very much appreciated. Our services are um, free to everyone in the community, oh. um, regardless of ability to pay. Um, and so we're always looking for um, funders to help support our scholarships so that people do, do not have to pay for our services. So do some people pay or... Nobody pays. For our youth programs, uh -huh. nobody pays. Uh -huh. um, we take Medi-Cal and private insurance, mm -hmm. um, so we will um, we will bill those services, but um, there is no out-of-pocket costs. Wow, that is amazing. Well, good for you guys. That, that's important, too. Well, we have a lot of, of support in our community, um, and we're, we're always um, happy for additional support as well. Yeah, and so I would imagine you are often looking for volunteers to help with some of the, maybe not that program, but some others? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of our main volunteer opportunities is our mentor program, and we're mm. always looking for um, adults in the community to be matched with a young person and spend time with them, help them with their schoolwork, take them out for fun events in the community. And um, it's a really, really rewarding experience for those mentors in addition to the mentees. And so yeah. um, we love our mentors, such a great support for our kids. Gosh, I've heard so many stories yeah. about mentors and mentees, and they're just pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for both sides. Right. Yeah. 
So a person can find out more about that on your website as well. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And uh, so that's the main uh, source for volunteers or need for volunteers. Yeah. Um, we also have a few events that mm. are occurring around that we love to have people participate in or volunteer for. Um, you know, the Daniel Bryant Youth and Family Center started um, from our Summit for Danny Climb. So Bob and Patty Bryant um, created this international cl climb um, hiking event that raises money for the Daniel Bryant Center. And so they have an international hike each year, and then they have local hikes, um, both in Santa Barbara and in Santa Maria every October. And so we always invite everybody out to come join us there. Um, there are volunteer opportunities at those events as well, but we'd love to just have you come and hike with us as well. Oh, that would be great. And yeah, that, that sounds wonderful. And that's summitfordanny.org. Okay. All right. So it has a separate... Uh, you can get there from the Cato yeah, website yeah, yeah. as well. Good. And so that raises money for the work that you're doing. Yes. Very important work. Yeah. Um, let's see, there was a question in my head. Um, well, do you think that a lot of other communities have something similar to this? You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I think we are very unique. I think we have an amazing program yeah. and the ability to have so many different services in one spot is uh, very special as well. And the breadth of the breadth of the services that we offer, from the family yes. to the early intervention to some of our diversion services like Teen Court, there's just a wide range of services all in one building. And there's there's three, you know, depending on your location as well, three different offices. Yeah, Teen Court. I've heard so much about that. Yeah, Teen Court is um, also uh, located at our Daniel Bryant Centers, and it's a amazing diversion program for kids who are maybe getting in trouble at school or mm -hmm. in the community for the first time, lower level offenses. And what we do is we bring them in and we kind of figure out what's going on and what are the underlying needs and how can we help them meet those needs. Um, some of them go through teen court, which mm -hmm. is a mock um, peer review court. Um, and they're, uh, from that, they'll figure out their plan for what they can do. We call it a restorative action plan. And so um, it's a really great opportunity um, we get a lot of positive feedback from the community about how that's helped. And it's been around for so long yeah. that, you know, we have parents of some of our, well, I was in teen court when I was a <laughs> youth. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I know what I wanted to ask you. So um, Daniel Bryant Center, how did that get its name? Tell us about Daniel. Yeah. So um, Bob Bryant um, had his uh, son, Daniel, who passed away from an overdose. And mm -hmm. because of that, Bob felt like, how do I... Create, how can I create something that would have helped Danny when he was a young man? Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, Bob with, with Kata came up with the Daniel Bryant Youth and Family Center. And so over time, I mean, that was 2001. And so it's, it's, it's grown a lot. We've served, I think, over 8,000 kids during that time and, um, and just created a space that, um, that someone like Danny would benefit from. That is so amazing that that someone that Bob would have that pretty earth shattering experience of losing his son to drugs and then do something so positive that helps so many people. Yeah, yeah, and Bob and Patty are such huge supporters, and and yes. and we we appreciate you know all the different things that they do for us and and for all of our kids. Yeah, so um, I would imagine that you collaborate with all kinds of organizations and schools and all? Can, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that. Absolutely. I mean, our, our collaborations with the schools are huge. In addition mm. to just sending us kids, um, they, you know, we, we, we are able to go out to some of the schools and provide the services there on campus um, for the ones who can't get to oh. our centers. Um, so, you know, our, 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 our ones that are, our schools that are a little bit, bit further from our centers, we can go in and provide services there. Um, so schools are a great um, collaborator. We work um, closely with uh, Santa Barbara County Juvenile Probation. Oh, oh um, sure. So, you know, they'll, they'll refer youth to us, but we also work with them in our diversion program, too. And then our county, Santa Barbara County Department of Behavioral Wellness, is a huge uh, partner of ours as well. Good for you. Yeah. So I bet, Michelle, that you might have a story you'd like to share with us about a family or a youth that's been touched by your work. Yeah, you know, I, I gravitate towards talking about the families I'm, I'm 
pretty uh, passionate about that. And, you know, there have been a couple of experiences recently where, as I was talking about, we've had families that come in really, really worried about um, about their child mm-hmm. and about of their course. use. Um, you know, fentanyl is on the rise. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, opioid use in, in our North County services especially. Mm-hmm. Um, parents coming in and just saying, I don't know what to do. I'm throwing my hands up. And being able to to get that um, that young person to a place where they can see their parents' fear and their parents' mm-hmm. concern, and then they can tell their parent, "How can I? How this is how you can help me." And and um, so we've had you know especially those parents that are, are separated or are no longer together who are able to come together, maybe being in the room for the first time in what like ten years, yeah. and and be there for their child. And how powerful is that? And that's where you see these moments where. They bring tears to, you know, to our eyes as therapists. Sure. Like, look at how powerful this is that you're saying, I'm here for you and, and I care. Gosh, that is so great. Yeah. So uh, we have a couple minutes left. What um, message would you have for our listeners? Uh, you know, we we appreciate all the community sp- support. Um, I think Kata is a lot of fun. I know I we just had our Earl Minnis Presents Chubby Checkers event, which was uh a fundraiser for Daniel Bryant Center, which was just so much fun. Um, I think we have a lot of ways for people to to donate, to get involved, to support mm. us. And I just uh, would really appreciate everyone going out and seeing what those opportunities are and um, helping us help our youth. Yeah. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for your important work that touches the lives of so many in our community. And thanks for being on our show to share it with us. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. 